Welcome back to the Big Apple, everybody. The, the city is buzzing. The Knicks lost in overtime the other night, and they're going down to Philly, to the Philadelphia Spectrum. All the Knicks fans in Philadelphia saying, no way, we're not letting you in this time. They're giving the tickets away to first responders. A lot of battle between New York and Little New York, which is Philadelphia. Of course, I'm from Boston, so we're having, always having battles with New York. It's great sports action here in the city, but we're here covering MongoDB Local. My name is Dave Vellante, and you're watching The Cube. We're here with Yalmar Van Ramdonk, who's the Vice President at ZF. Yalmar, welcome. Thank you, thanks, thanks for having me. So. Yeah, you, you bet. So tell us more about ZF. It's not a, a, a company that maybe people are familiar with, but you've got some connections there in your role. Yes, uh, so ZF is a big automotive supplier. Uh, they are uh, one of the top three tier one suppliers in, uh, globally. They provide steering systems, braking systems, chassis systems, even autonomous systems, and they sell it to every, every single OEM car, truck, trailer into the world. I'm responsible for the digital unit. So I'm responsible for the digital unit uh, scaler. And what are we? We are really like a SaaS business in this uh, big group. And we provide fleet management uh, systems to the fleet. This is interesting yeah. because you know, we talk about every business is a software business. Every business needs to be a digital business. So we now have uh, an example. That is a major trans transformation for, for, for a company because software is a different business altogether. There's different, obviously, technical requirements, go-to-market requirements, workflow, mindset, culture. Can you describe that transformation? Take us through that journey. Yeah. So. Um, we had already for more than 35 years a digital unit. Uh, we were already based in, in Europe, it started in Europe. We had a fleet management system, which, uh, which is now one of the top systems in Europe. And true to mergers and acquisitions, we ended up with, uh, with CF. And one of the reasons why CF, CF wanted to uh, have, let's say, this, uh, this digital unit is because you see that you have to not only sell spare parts, sell, let's say, in the aftermarket spare, uh, spare parts again, and then they want to have a third value stream, which is digital. And we are, let's say, a completely dedicated unit, and we are with more than 600 people already, and we are having uh, a revenue of more than $100 million already in digital space, and where we offer, as a SaaS company, services towards the fleet in such a way that they can run themselves better. Okay, but 35 years ago, there was no cloud, you know, there was no SaaS, right? <laughs> right? It was mainframes, right? And so, yeah. so you had to make that transition and stay current. Um, that had to be, and, and of course you acquired companies, so you, you, your culture changed throughout. Yeah. How do you describe that? Yeah, very good question. So, 35 years ago we were really pioneers. Uh, we're trying to get data out of a vehicle and we send it to a mobile big unit device to give instructions to the driver. Over, and we literally put a computer at the desk of the fleet and then he was running his system. Over the years, we put it more centrally and then in, in 10 years ago, we started with MongoDB with an on-prem solution. Of course, we started to evolve, evolve, we did some extra acquisitions as well and then you have different cultures where we have to bring it one and that's what we're doing now with Scalar. Uh, we just launched our platform Scalar and we shifted our technology together as well with MongoDB 100% in the cloud with, At with Atlas. So to double click on that, so you're all in the cloud, the whole stack running on Mongo. Correct, yes. Uh, oh, why Mongo? Why Mongo? Um, three reasons. The, the feature richness, uh, for example, they have the, the, the time series, which is really important for us. Why? Because we take so much data out of the vehicle, sensor data, we, have to, we, we, we take more and more, and we, we have to gather it to life. We have the geocoding as well that we need. We are in the IoT, an important one. Second one is really the, 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 yeah, the way, the easiness of to use it. Eh? The, the learning curve is really, really low. And then the third one, I think it's the most important one, is the customer centricity of MongoDB. If you look to this event, it's, it's insane, right? It's really, it's really nice. And what I like a lot is the end customer focus, but more the end user's focus. Eh? They are not focusing on me as the head off, but they're focusing on the developers. 
and they're focusing on the developers, listening to them, and that's the reason why MongoDB is our default choice. Yeah, we, the yeah. Cube has been following MongoDB before it was even called MongoDB, the and cube. it was always a developer focused, and developers tell us the same thing. It's, it's simple to use, but it, uh, they've added all these capabilities. I mean, you could go out and get a time series database, and yeah. you could go out and get a vector database, you could go out, all these different database types, but having it all in one place with an easy to use, simple developer platform is very attractive. What about um, well, actually, before I get to AI strategy, so the use case, primary use case is fleet management, is that right? Yeah. Are there others? Yeah, the, the primary use case is fleet management. We have more than 400,000 connections live. Depending on the fleet, it is every second, every minute, every two minutes that we get data. We are mentioning that globally, mainly in Europe and in uh, India, where we are player, and we are now entering as well uh, North America. We are growing really fast at uh, this moment, and uh, yeah, we, we are mainly focused on the heavy commercial vehicles at this moment. You, are, you live in the heart of, uh, of uh, I'd say, uh, public policy and privacy uh, regulation. Yeah. And so, how are you seeing that affect your business? I mean, Europe, the EU has, has led yeah. with GDPR, now they're leading with you know, AI guardrails. You see, you know, the United States adopts you know, frameworks, but of course we're Americans, so we have to make it a little <laughs> different. But generally speaking, Europe is leading that. How do you see that whole privacy and, and regulation piece evolving? How do you handle that in your business? Yeah, that's also one of the reasons um, that we started with a new platform. Uh, we had around five different platforms and we are now merged to one. We are live since, since one year. And one of the reasons we did that is because of the cybersecurity regulations, the GDPR, which is the private regulations. And in order to do so, you really need different technology. So we shifted our complete architecture from a monolith to microservices in the cloud. And that's also logic choice that you go from MongoDB uh, Atlas. And, and that's, that's, that's what's happening at this moment. And a lot of companies are struggling with that, but we have made that decision and we are now making a global platform for that. Okay, what about your AI strategy? Can yeah. you talk about your roadmap, how you're adopting? I'm sure you've been using AI for a long time, but then now we've got a new era of AI, yeah. new capabilities that are coming out so fast with LLMs and other tools and things like Amazon Bedrock and Mongo embedding vector databases and all. The technology is just amazing. It's virtually impossible to, to keep up with it all, but how are you guys applying yeah. AI and how are you driving customer value? When we launched Scalar, we really were thinking about our vision and our mission. And our mission of Scalar uh, within the ZF group is, we want to orchestrate road transport. And you will say, hey, what does that mean, orchestrate road transport? It is sending the right vehicle with the right driver at the right time and do more with your, with your assets that you have. So we have two problems that we have to solve. And we'll come immediately to the AI. We have the problem of operational efficiency, do more. And we have the problem of, if you want to do that right, you have to make sure that your vehicle is available. Not available, it's not doing another mission. Available from it's working. And that's the problem we want to solve is about unplanned downtime. And this is exactly what we're trying to do with our knowledge of SADAF. We understand the steering, the gearbox, the braking system, everything, and we get all this data in our offering. So where are we now using AI for? You can use AI for machine learning, as you said already, you can start to predict. But we want to scale the, the fleet, the dispatcher. If you take the context of an European fleet, you're able to do, depending on the sector, eight to 12 drivers, assets. And we want to scale that to 20, 30, 40, 100 unlimited. But that's only possible if you're going to use the technology of AI on live data. So I'm not talking about AI on big data, I'm talking about AI on live data, and that's exactly where we're looking at with MongoDB. Because if something happens, the driver or the dispatcher has to make a decision and he needs assistance for that. Real time. Real time, exactly. Okay, so but, but you know, MongoDB is not an analytic database. You know, it's not a big data store where you're just doing you know, a, a historical analysis yeah. of the data. How do you do that? Because that is actually a useful input um, to, to, to the system to yeah. try to predict how to become more efficient, get the vehicles to the right place at the right time. Yeah. So, um, we have acquired like, now three years ago, a, a, a small company based in, uh, in Switzerland, purely focused on optimization logarithms. That we, have, that we have done. They are fully integrated now in Scalar. And now what we are adding now is we are now going to 
adding more data, live data, and we are applying AI with algorithms, purely on the optimization. So the, the, the goal that we're doing is live decision making whenever it is needed. So that's interesting. So essentially you acquired what I would call a, a purpose-built analytic engine for your business. So we talk in, on theCUBE all the time about, we call it the sixth data platform because yeah. you have all these existing data platforms today, but, but the future, we say, is bringing together analytics and transactions yeah. in a real-time system Almost like Uber yeah. for the enterprise. Yeah. I got drivers and riders and, and, and ETAs and prices, et cetera. It all comes together in virtually in real time. Correct. And yeah. there's geolocation, et cetera. And that's essentially what you've built in-house. Correct, that's, a, that's exactly what we have done in-house. And what we're also doing is, apart from in the cargo, we're also in the people mobility transport. And what is it? The on-demand. And if you look to the, the problem of of the on-demand, if you say, hey, I would like to have an Uber, I would like to have something else, but if you take it from a fleet perspective, it's not always the car who is closest to you who is the best to, to, to pick you up. So we have defined that. That's what we're doing, and we are even showing it this year in uh, Oslo, if I'm not mistaken, with an autonomous vehicle, that you can have on-demand, live decision-making uh, to pick you up. How do you feel about uh, autonomous, uh, since you brought it up? I mean, I was just talking about this in the New York Stock Exchange uh, TV program the other day. You know, some people think full self-driving is going to be here you know, next, next week. Yeah. Others feel like it's, it's a decade away. How, do you have thoughts on that, and how will you, how will you apply autonomous driving? Um, we are ready to have an autonomous fleet to manage that. Uh, our orchestration platform is able to handle autonomous fleets 100%. Mm -hmm. That was the basis with the acquisition. I do not know when it will, will happen. I literally do not know. But we are part of every single project in Europe to manage autonomous fleets. We are, not, we are in the vehicle as SADAF, but we are also in the cloud as SADAF to manage this but I do not know when it will really it's hard to, It's very yeah. hard to predict. I mean, there's a technology element which nobody can predict. Yeah. Um, and, and then, but also there's, there's public policy, regulations, insurance, and, and the like. So, but you're, the point is you're ready yeah. when that happens. And I can only imagine what that would do for your business if you can go to a fully autonomous fleet. Yeah, correct. And if you take it from a an, uh, an, an people mobility perspective, like a PTO, a public transport operator, they are driving on fixed lines they will shift to on-demand, and one day they will shift as well to autonomous. And our platform scaler is ready for all these three use cases. So we are talking with big PTOs to say, hey, you can do try on-demand now, whenever you're ready. You can do uh, autonomous whenever you're ready, and they are now able to do that in one Is that a part. tough conversation in your part of the world? Because Look, you're in the United States, like, oh, you're fired. And it's people like, oh, oh, too bad, get another job. Yep. In Europe, it's not the same. I mean, you, yep. have, you have employment contracts and you have a lot more public uh, focus on, on employment and retaining employment. You know, sometimes I feel like it's, uh, you know, protecting the, 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 the past from the future. On the other hand, that's the culture. How do you see that? Um, I think in, in, yeah, you have the policy makers in Europe, of course, uh, mm. it's, all, it's all centrally driven, it's not, it's, it's going his, his way, but if you look to the companies, they are, f they are really flexible, they are really shifting to, if, if, if we, we made a decision as Sadev as well, okay, it will be later autonomous, but we are really shifting the resources, so it's possible, and there are enough opportunities, we always have the problem that, we have so many ideas and opportunities and not enough resources, right? And I think that's a good way to be, yeah. So the culture would be, okay, we got 600 employees, to the extent that happened tomorrow, you would begin to retrain those employees, put them into some of these projects that you don't have time to get to. Yeah, but it's all about, if I look to, to my team, it's all about the vision. We believe that one day autonomous will come. So everything that they have to build, they always have to think like, imagine you don't have a driver anymore. So you, you have to build in the workflows, all the automated techs, asking yourself, imagine you don't have a driver. So our whole system is priority on with a driver, but whenever you don't have a driver, it's also ready. Yeah. And that's how we build it up. So you're transparent about that, and yeah. then they can, from their standpoint, think about, okay, where can I add value in the, in the company, in this world where eventually it will be autonomous, and then they can 
identify new areas of innovation. Yep. Yamar, thank you so much thank for coming you. on theCUBE. A fantastic conversation, really appreciate it. Oh, one last question. If Dave at the Cherrier were right here, and you were one thing that Dave could do with Mongo to make your life easier, what would it be? Uh, it would be really keep on listening to our developers and our time series is very important for us because we're going to get a lot of data out of the vehicles. Great, so well thank, thank you, you very much, Yamar. Appreciate your time. All right, keep it right there. We'll be right back. I'm Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE at MongoDB Local from New York City. Right back.